I think we're going to start talking about the score, and then Benj is going to come out and, and, and talk about the, the songs. But although actually the songs came before the score, right? Sort of. I mean, you, you <clears throat> with the musical, you, you have to figure out the songs before the movie's shot. Um, whereas the score, like any movie, is something that's normally figured out in post-production. You're watching the picture and you're writing music to the to the scenes. And this, it was a it was an unusual process because I was working with Damien for years before we met Benj Pasek and Justin Paul, the lyricist. So I've been developing a lot of themes and a lot of melodies. Some of those we turned into songs, and then gave to them to write the lyrics. Other themes. Uh, we sort of knew early on before the movie was ever shot that those would end up in the score. So it's just a lot of conversations between me and Damien. Where do we put these melodies? How do we use them? And some ended up being used for both, um, you know, in songs and then used as part of these sequences, like that fantasy sequence towards the end. So now you two knew each other from college days, right? Yeah, we yeah we were roommates in college. Yeah, um, although. I think you lived in Montecito before college. Yeah, from 88 to 98, uh, lived here. And um, yeah, this is where I started taking piano lessons and uh, started composing, yeah. Um, well, okay, so, so when you started writing uh, uh, the songs, are there, are there six songs in the film? I think five songs in City of Stars happens twice. Okay. I think so. All right, but now, did, 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 was, it, was it planned out? It's like, let's, let's start out with 15 and go from there, or let's start out with two songs and build up from there? Uh, no, uh, there were always five or six songs in the movie. There was one that got cut that was in the script, but Damien's script always had, uh, you know, the indications of where the songs would go and how they'd be used, what they would do narratively, what they would do emotionally, like um, what the storytelling would be behind them. So his script would say, here, um, uh, Mia has this, has this audition that means everything to her. She's quit acting. She's been convinced to come back for one final audition. And, she, and it was a description of the scene and how she would slip into song and what the song would sort of what some of those themes would be. So the, the scre screenplay indicated a song would go there. And, and likewise, the other areas, you know, the script started with, there's a big musical number on a freeway and some, some indications of what that would, should feel like and what that should be about. But it, it was in the script, really, as well as some of the instrumental stuff, like the, some of the stuff that's in the score um, was also in the script, which I think is unusual for a, a, a screenwriter to write, you know, exactly where score would go in some instances, like the big planetarium sequence where they float up into the stars. That was all written, that was all part of the screenplay, but it ended up becoming a big score piece in the movie. Yeah, because I mean, normally with scores, it's, it's done, you know, in, in, in post-production, but, but this was, this score was, was always part of the process, you're saying? Yeah, well, yeah, the, the, the score, if you're just talking about the dramatic underscore, mm -hmm. a lot of that is post-production, a lot of that is, is me watching the picture and scoring, but like I said, because I'd been working on these melodies and themes for so long, Damien and I started sort of earmarking some and saying, well, this can go there and that can go there, and thinking about where they would go. Also, those big sequences like the planetarium um, and the fantasy sequence at the end, those were things that I had been p piano demoing and then orchestrating and actually mocking up before the movie was shot. I had to then reconfigure everything to picture later as Tom and uh, as uh, Damien and Tom Cross, the picture editor, sort of reshaped things. Um, it was also a very long, just looking at the score itself, is a very long process for me in post-production because most movies, you um, they're edited to temp music, meaning mm -hmm. all the early cuts, they're just putting in uh, cues from other film, uh, other film scores or classical music just to sort of help the editing process and the composer doesn't come in until later until the, the, the cut is almost done or until the picture is locked. But we didn't feel like temp music could work in this movie because it all sort of had to have the same flavor to it. The score and the songs all had to sort of work together. So, um, so I scored for about eight months from the beginning of the editorial process. I had an office next to the editing room and I was just there all day. So as as Tom would cut scenes, he would give them to me and I would write a score cue and I'd give them back and then picture would change to the score cue and score cues would change to the picture. And the picture and the score were kind of evolving together, which was a, it took a lot of time, but it was a very um, fulfilling process because I, I felt like, you know, I was, 
I felt like I wasn't being boxed in by any temp music, mm -hmm. you know, anything that they may have just put in there. I could, I could, the picture and the music could sort of inform each other. Yeah.